Hello my friends, I'm so glad you're here today. We are gonna chat about e.l.f., new e.l.f. products, many that I've gotten questions about recently. We've got a new version of the Camo CC Cream. We've got some new liquid blushes, mascara, some lip products, a brow product. So I'm gonna show all of these going on. I've been using these for the last four or five days or so and I feel like I've become fairly well versed on how they work. So yeah, let's get into it. I've got my skincare on already, my serums, my moisturizer, eye cream, sunscreen, and we're gonna jump into this new complexion product from e.l.f. It's called the Camo Hydrating CC Cream. So they already had a regular Camo CC Cream, but this says full coverage, long-lasting, dewy finish, plus tremella mushroom and hyaluronic acid, and it does have an SPF of 30. This is going to retail for $15. So on the expensive end, as far as drugstore foundations go. The shade I have here is Light 210N. I'm gonna check and see what I have in the regular. Okay, Light 210N as well in the regular formula. And I do feel like they really matched them up this time. I feel like with the camo concealer, at least at first, the hydrating wasn't exactly the same as the matte. But here I do feel like Light 210N is the same across both. So how hydrating and dewy is this really? I feel like I definitely notice a dewy finish after application application, but I don't feel like throughout the course of my day, my skin continues to feel really hydrated. It's just something I notice upon application. I do like the coverage. I like the way it blends out, but let's just go through the process here. We've got a pump. We're going to pump out a full pump, but it spurts a little. Got to be careful about Mondays and black leggings and foundation that spurts out. I think I have the equivalent to a full pump here, um, and I'm just going to dab this around on the skin like I always do. And I have applied this with a sponge. It worked fine. As usual, I think that takes down the coverage a little bit, but it wasn't bad. I still think this foundation has a good amount of coverage, or this CC cream, maybe I should call it. But I'm just dabbing this in, pressing it in on the skin. You can see just across that plane of the face how much it covers. It really is taking away the appearance of the small freckles. It's certainly taking care of discoloration. It's making the need for concealer, I wouldn't say it takes away your need for concealer, but it definitely causes you to maybe put in a little less. Easily blendable, and can you see like right now, the freshness on the tops of the cheeks? You're like, okay, I can see why they called it dewy, but by the time you put a little bit of setting powder on that, which, you know, I'm going to want to do. Now, maybe some people won't, and you can hang on to this a little longer, but I still feel like there's no real prolonged, oh, when I put this on, my skin feels so hydrated all day. I don't really get that feeling, but it does have good staying power. The product itself is lasting on my skin throughout the day, but again, I am setting it. So you're giving up some things there. When you set it, you take away some of the dewy look. I think you probably take away some of the dewy feel, but I think you're helping it in the staying power department. I would say if you're really, really dry, use your nice and hydrating skincare underneath and maybe don't set it as much. But there we are, and I think I was probably just shy of the full pump actually, um, and I still feel like I can call this full coverage. Now I'm gonna round out my complexion steps of concealer and powder with e.l.f. products just so you can kind of see how this all comes together. I'm using my Hydrating Camo Concealer. This is in the shade Light Peach. And then I'll set that with my e.l.f. Halo Glow Loose Powder in the light pink shade. But a couple of little dots in here, a little bit out here. I don't know if I said it, but the e.l.f. Duo Complexion Brush, an awesome product to use with all of these steps. We're just going to smooth out the concealer into a little larger area and then dab it in with the larger part of the brush. So I'm a huge fan of the Hydrating Camo Concealer. I love the way it goes on, the way it covers. I love what it adds to the under eye area. It pairs so well with so many different base products. Ooh, got a hair there. But I just like the way it works alongside so many other steps of the routine. You know, it looks good even being set with some powder. Ooh, I got a lot of extra on the brush there. See, so more coverage and brightness yet on the under eye. The look as a whole has a dewiness to it, but we are going to set it because we like staying power. So this is e.l.f.'s Halo Glow. I have the light pink shade. Again, this and the concealer were not new in the haul. I've been working with these products for a while. Tap some in the cap, grab you a triangle powder puff, and away we go. So setting this whole area way up to the inner corner so you can take advantage of that brightness that this powder gives. We'll get around the nose as well. I'm just pressing it in. 
and we'll tap a little bit up in here too. And then I can dust away any excess powder. And you know, I was feeling full coverage after the CC cream, but now it's a definite like full coverage, very perfected look. Now, am I still a little dewy down here on the cheeks? Yeah, and if you wanted to, you could set those other areas as well. But for me, it's really necessary that I set the under eye and T-zone, and then I know this is gonna wear well for me today. So the takeaway on this product is again, for me, yes, I think it's good coverage. Yes, it does have an immediate dewy look on the skin. Um, by the time you've set it, continued on with your routine. I don't think there's anything that that makes me feel exceptionally hydrated with this like prolonged hydration throughout the day on my skin but it does definitely have a dewier look at the onset I think you have some control in terms of the base products you use on this and how little or how much you decide to set it I think that will determine how dewy this continues to look and feel for you my aim is more so staying power so I know I'm gonna set it but with the normal routine of a concealer a setting powder it works really well for me now it's $15 what is this similar to. It kind of makes me think of my CoverGirl Outlast Extreme Wear Light Airbrush Finish. It's similar to that weight and texture going on. Um, this might look a little more dewy than that right away, but that one still, for as full coverage as it is, it really doesn't have a dry thickness to it, you know? So I feel like the overall ending look I get amounts to about the same thing. And just for reference, that Outlast Extreme Wear, we're talking about the red cap foundation. That's going to run you around $11, so it's not too far off from this one actually. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to continue with my face routine. I might do a light bit of powder all over, some bronzer, and then we have some blushes to talk about. Okay, that didn't take long. I set with just a little bit of the Huda Glowish powder on like forehead and the sides of my cheeks, and then I contoured with this e.l.f. Halo Glow Beauty Wand, which is in the medium tan shade. Just a little bit of that around the hairline, a little bit in the hollow of the cheek, and then we've got these new blushes. So these are called Camo Liquid Blushes. Blushes, and these are gonna run you $7 a piece. These are on the level of the Rare Beauty liquid blushes. I'm sure you've heard other people say this. Um, another similar thing that's out there that really is probably about a comparable price to this are the ones from Profusion. That was like the original drugstore thing that I found and thought this has that intense, concentrated pigmentation of those Rare Beauty blushes, but then there are these. And the takeaway here is that a little goes a long way. I think they're a great buy for $7 because I think you'll have them for a long while but don't be fooled by like this coming off and there's all that product there on the doe foot don't be tempted to swipe all that on your cheek because it's a lot I really wasn't sure what to expect when I first tried this product and I put a lot more of this shade on than necessary and I thought oh it looks more muted no the name of this one is suave mauve and I'll put a little bit of that like on my hand so maybe you can better see what that's gonna be like. Deep Dusty Rose. And then I have this one called Berry Well. They describe this one as a cool berry. Again, tons coming off on the applicator. You gotta watch yourself, but as you shear it out, you know, there's a ton of intensity in that shade. So those are the two that I have. Things are getting messy, I need to wipe this off. So how is it best to apply these products? Well, one method could be you could try to control yourself so much and do the tiniest dot on your cheeks and then buff that out with a brush. Or you could dab a little on your hand, turn your hand into a bit of a palette, shear it out, and get an even application on your brush and then dab it on the cheeks. If you're ultra intimidated by this product, which I am kind of intimidated, I'm just gonna put a little bit on my hand. Okay, so a little dab there off of the doe foot. Spread it out a bit. Take my brush, pick up into that, and start dabbing it on the cheeks from there. And then you don't really feel like, oh, I've got this intense streak or this intense dot to try to work with now. And that tiny amount of suave mauve, like you can totally see that on the cheeks. I'm gonna do a little bit on the other side and then I wanna like layer up some of the other shade too. So that's why I'm trying to be so minimal and so careful. This is just a Sephora 56. This is a mini size of it, mini size handle, but full size brush head. And it gives a nice natural look on the skin. Like you can see a little radiance that comes out of that, that a powder blush might not give you, but yet it does not feel sticky to the touch. Okay, so that's a really light application, probably the lightest that Suave Mauve can go, and you could most definitely put on more of this shade, but I want to be able to put on a little bit of the berry too. It's called Berry Well. Berry Well then. I'm getting a little bit of that on my hand. I'm smoothing it around. I'm dabbing in with the brush. Do, do, do. Might need to cab off a little. 
Look how bright, how intense. This was minimal. This was a little bit. Very well takes you there, okay? So I just want you to know that. I'm here to exhibit the process, and even with a little, very well is a lot. I feel like you could definitely dab these on the lips too. I mean, why not? But yeah, super bright, super full colored cheek. If you get on more than you intended, I would say go back to your loose powder, do a little dab of that all over, or any powder really, but I might just go back in for a little bit of the e.l.f. halo glow. Get some of that on a larger brush and just give that a sweep all over the skin. Almost like we're just jumping to finishing powder here, which you could, but I might do a highlight. But see, it can be softened. Everything's correctable and everything ends up making a bit more sense by the end of the look anyway, but yeah, I'm impressed by those. I think $7, I could have seen Elf like jacking up the price on those actually a little bit more. And there's a whole range of one, two, three, four, five, six, eight different shades. And again, this could go darker too. Don't just think, oh, that one's not just kind of barely there. I went incredibly light because I knew this bad boy was coming up next. So I'm impressed by those. If you are into an ultra pigmented blush, if you want something that's on the level of Rare Beauty, we have yet another option from the drugstore. All I did during that little break, I put on a bit of powder highlighter. This is from the Revlon Skin Lights line. It's the Daybreak Glimmer shade. So got some of that on tops of cheeks, forehead, and now we're moving on to a new brow product. It looks like that Instant Lift Brow Pencil, but this is the new waterproof version. It's $4, and I believe the cost on the other one, is that still two? It's two or three dollars for the original, and this I have in the shade Neutral Brown, and as far as the thickness of the pencil, it's a little bit thicker than like an ABH brow whiz or all of those really skinny pencils. It's the same cut same design as the original Instant Lift, but now we have this waterproof version, and you'll notice the change in the formula. As you put this on, it feels thicker somehow. It feels like more product is laying down, just like a thicker, creamier, just less dry um, as far as the product goes, and you will notice this actually having hold in your brows. Like you'll go through with your spoolie after you've done this step of fill-in, and you'll be like, oh, Something's in there already holding things a little bit. So I find that interesting. I haven't really waterproof tested this on my face yet. I never had a staying power issue with the original one, but this one definitely seems to be laying down a little more product and something in the formula is actually holding the brows a bit more, which is kind of unusual to see in a pencil, but the color is on point for me. I think I used neutral brown in just the original Instant Lift. but like you go through it, you're feeling something. Something has set there a little bit. This is really interesting to me. I think it's another hit from e.l.f. I never had any real complaints about the original version, but what I would say for this is that you get a little bit quicker and more intense color payoff with this because the formula is just a little bit more creamy. Uh, there's just a richness to it, whereas the other one is a bit more on the dry side, but that never bothered me because I generally like a little dryness in my brow pencil. But this fills in so quickly and effectively. I'm a fan of this too, and plus the shade is really on point. So I'm just going to take a little NYX Control Freak now, and this is where you f go over it with the gel and you're like, oh, something's already holding in here. Like I'm doing this just to have a little extra hold, but it's definitely already feeling practically like you've put a pomade on. So I'm certainly using less gel to set. All right, my friends, I moved on. I put on Milani eyeshadow primer. I did a very quick look with the e.l.f. I love you a latte quad. I went across my upper lash line with some of my Laura Geller jumbo pencil. Um, these are called Kajal Longwear Eyeliners, but it's the soft black coal shade. Just a little bit over like three quarters of the top lid, and then I smudged some cold brew from Hard Candy. This nice little rich bronzy shade, that's across the lower lash line. And we're moving on to a new mascara here, the e.l.f. Lash Extender Mascara. It's spelled X. T-N-D-R. Guys, this is good. The teal on the packaging, that was no accident. I can tell this tubing mascara is designed after the Thrive Liquid Lash Extensions. I don't currently have one of those on hand, but I see the brush and I think, yes, you know, those short rubber bristles, the gentle taper to the wand. Again, it's a true tubing formula that does not smudge. I have tested this every time I've worn it. I've worn it top and bottom and zero smudges. Yes, this is big news because this is something I could trust 
in the way I use my Cali Ray, and this is $7. So they say 97% saw instant dramatic lash length. It is really good about lengthening out the lashes. Um, the other day I actually tried it with a primer underneath, my Essence Primer, and I thought that helped with added thickness too, but this is a pretty good mascara all on its own as well. The shade is pitch black, and they do say that if you're going to add extra coats, you're supposed to layer it up before it gets dry. And then when it removes, like a true tubing mascara, you will see just the little kind of rubbery bits releasing from your lashes as you take your makeup off. This has made it through tears and cheerleading practices and nothing smudging down below. Okay, so I've worn it top and bottom. I really wanted to test it that way because I just wanted to see if it was like other tubing mascaras I know and love, and it truly is. And I know Milani has something that they put out that was supposed to be their take on something like this, but I didn't have as good of an experience with that one. This one I really enjoy, and the cost is $7. I think that's very fair. That's coming in less than the cost of a lot of new mascaras in the drugstore, even just at Walmart. You know, I was just doing that under $10 video, and there are a lot of mascaras just over 10. So I'm impressed to see this be a new one. This costing $7, it comes in the three shades. I'm guessing like that's a black, a very black, and then a brown. But I'm getting my lashes curled really well. I'm not using any kind of primer with this today because obviously I just want you to see how this is. And again, those short rubber bristles, the brush is coming out quite cleaned off out of the tube, so you're not going to get any excess. This is going to be lengthening and defining, but as you add more coats, I think you will see the additional thickness coming in. But just to show you that one coat there, I feel like every lash got something and every lash is standing out and not sticking to one another. Also, this was good for curl holding too. So I'm gonna go on with my next coat. I just dip back into my tube. I'm gonna go on with my next coat right away. That's what they say to do if you wanna build it up. And when you build it with coat two, you're gonna feel like, okay, the lashes seem thickened up a little bit, but not like they're sticking together, but just like the lashes themselves are thicker and the length is building really nicely without having any kind of weird end to it. You know what I mean? These lengthening mascaras that try to extend the length of your lashes, but they don't do it in a natural, real looking way. This is doing a good job there. Without even thinking, I just dip back in the tube for yet a little bit more. Here's what we're working with. Really good length, really good hold, and then with the same mascara, I'm going right down here to the lower lashes knowing that this has survived a lot this weekend. I gotta tell you, if you haven't seen my TikTok or my Instagram, we had a little house on the prairie birthday for Biddy, and it was so much fun. We had little pies. I bought the miniature pies from Walmart. My mom makes the absolute most delectable pies, but I wasn't gonna ask that of her right now. And I thought, you know, I can get all those little ones from Walmart, different flavors, so that was enjoyable for the kids. Did a little house inspired meal, not really like authentic, this is prairie food, but in the spirit of fried chicken, we got Culver's chicken tenders, I made some baked beans, some cornbread, some mashed potatoes, you know, it was a nice little meal. Of course, Biddy had a full, like, Laura Ingalls type of outfit, and I ordered some extra bonnets, and I got whoever was handy to get into, like, a family picture with our serious, like, pioneer family on the brink faces. One thing I noticed about this mascara is that it's very, like, light on the lashes, so if you get a good curl, and then you get this on there, you feel like it's kind of locking in that curl and not dragging down. And the length is great. I'm gonna definitely get come in close once I get like my full application done here so you can truly see how long this is making my lashes. But building up here on the left eye, there's one coat. But I think people are gonna love this mascara. I love it for two reasons. It's making my lashes look really nice and long. With about two coats, I'm really pleased with the building. But then just in a practical sense, the way it wears and that I can pop that on the lower lashes and now I'm replacing a high-end product. Like, I love you, Cali Ray and all. You've been good for me for a long time, but hard to argue with $7 and doing the same exact thing. So I've just applied that to that left eye, and it is feeling majority of the way dry at this point. I'm just kind of checking. So the fast drying nature of this, yeah, you don't want to like put it on one eye and then wait a long time and go to the other eye, but I'm getting great length here if i show you sideways i think you can hopefully you can see there against my hand like 
the length I'm experiencing. It's really good. Pat those lashes. I'm enjoying that. That mascara is my favorite find of the video. It's the most routine changing. It's like literally kicking out a product that I use daily and this is going to be the one I continue to repurchase. Super duper happy with that. Now for lips, I'm trying a new lip liner Elf has put out. They have this cream glide lip liner. It looks like a very standard pencil and sometimes you see these pencils or at least I see them and I think, oh this is going to feel really dry crossing the lips. Actually this one feels very creamy and the shade I have is called, oh I can't believe they put it on the end of this cap. When a shade name is on a clear cap it's so hard to read. This shade is called Mauve Aside. This shade is almost exactly like Revlon Color Stay Lip Liner in Nude. That's one of the must-have shades that I've raved on the most probably from the Revlon Color Stay Lip Liner range and I think those are some of the best lip liners period like drugstore high-end. Those you put them on they practically feel like they're locking in. They are not quick to transfer off. Even when you put creamy things on top while that may break them down slightly faster than if you just wore them along Alone, they still manage to last rather well. This, not the hardcore staying power of those two. If you let a swatch of this and a swatch of Revlon Color Stay Lip Liner in Nude just sit on your hand for a period of time. I did this. Let them just stay there and then go to rub them off. Color Stay will stay. This will wipe away. They are about the exact same shade and this does go across the lips nice and softly so I'll apply it. Um, I'm not saying this is a bad lip liner. What are they selling it for? This is only a $2 lip liner. And I really like the shade, obviously. I've spoken highly of Nude from Revlon. My lips are dry. They're feeling dry down there in the middle. And this is going on easily. I'll give it that. I love the color. Very everyday. Could be a great partner to different nude lipsticks. Yes. But if you're already sitting there with Revlon Color Stay Lip Liner in Nude, that is going to take you a lot further in the staying power department than this one will. And then I also picked up another shade of the Glow Reviver Lip Oil. I was already kind of familiar with this one from the red shade that I have. And I did a little roundup of like sheer red glosses in a TikTok video. So maybe I should link to that below. But I got a more neutral one here. This is the Honey one. And it really doesn't have a lot of color on its own if you look at a swatch and you see it shearing out like it's giving you a tinge of nude um, but not offering a whole lot. I like the little applicator. I like how it's practically turned back. I think these feel good on the lips. They don't feel annoying and on top of this lip liner like I love the finished look. I really do. I'm just saying it would last longer if it was Revlon Color Stay. So guys, this is my finished look incorporating all of these new e.l.f. things. And surprisingly, like every new thing that I tried, I really have enjoyed. The number one fave from the video is this e.l.f. Lash Extender Mascara. I think it's an excellent tubing mascara. It's giving me length. It's holding the curl. It's not smudging. It's just going to be a great everyday favorite for me, I think. This Hydrating Camo CC Cream. The coverage is undeniably beautiful. Again, I think it's up to you how much you take it advantage of the dewiness. I think you can play into it more by again having some real juicy skincare underneath and then also not setting it so much. I think you'll continue to see more of the dewy vibe. For me my staying power is a real priority so I'm like okay I'm gonna put this on. I will set my under eye. I will set my t-zone. Lightly set all over the face. And if you keep that powder light and you pop on a little highlighter you're still gonna look dewy. But $15 and it's definitely not the only good drugstore full coverage thing that's out there. You can still get your really great coverage out of Wet n Wild Photo Focus, CoverGirl like I mentioned, Maybelline Superstay. There are many options. These are blushes that you will have for a long time I predict because they just are very little goes a long way ultra comparable to Rare Beauty. I think that's what e.l.f. was trying to be here and they executed really well. Staying power is good on these two. I think the challenge with these may be just figuring out how can I get a really light natural application? How can I keep from overdoing it? Okay. The waterproof brow is cool. It practically feels like a two-in-one because it is holding in the brows as well. The lip look, ultimately I think that lip look is gorgeous, but these aren't really one-of-a-kind products here. You know, the lip liner is fine, but not as good as Revlon. 
these lip oils I think are nice. They have a beautiful feel on the lips. I don't feel overly goopy, but I feel moisturized. So I like these, but we know there are other good glossy things on the market from the Lifter Gloss range. Other great lip oil type of things like this that are really technically just like lip glosses, but the Hard Candy Gloss Topias are good. The Milani Fruit Fetish. They put out a range of nudes that I know that there's something kind of like this in there too. This is not offering a lot of color. It's mainly just there for the shine. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope this review was helpful for you. Let me know what your experiences have been like in the comments section if you've tried any of this stuff. And I will see you again very soon. I love you. Bye.